Okay, so last time we talked about Dan Schneider and him being a massive weirdo. We talked about this interview with Boogie and how he was trying to clear his name with a clearly faked and scripted apology, but nobody was buying it. Now, since then, a lot of weird clips have resurfaced on Twitter regarding Dan, and let's just say that he is an actual creeper. Here's a video of Miranda Cosgrove trying to move away from Dan Schneider at her 18th birthday party. Now look, honestly, in trying to figure out what I could say today about Miss Miranda for her birthday, I come to the conclusion that what you can say is, what can't you say? I mean, honest to God, I could go on and on about all the wonderful qualities about Miranda, but I know time permits, and I will consolidate it to just this one thing. In all the years I've known Miranda, I guess nine years now, she hasn't changed. Miranda hasn't changed one bit. All those awesome qualities that she had when she was nine years old, all the goodness, all those smiles. All okay, so you can see Miranda try to sort of slink away, kind of like me when the guests arrive at my house and I'm trying to go back to my room and my uncle pulls a Dan Schneider. <laughs> okay, no, I'm kidding. But dude is so weird. He got her in a headlock, bro. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. And he, he looks like he's about to twist her head off, kind of like zombie style. Dude, look at this frame, dog. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. This is this is something that should be happening over here. This this looks illegal. This actually just looks illegal. You cannot look at that and tell me this man is not an absolute 100% pure premium, freshly pulp squeezed A grade creep. Okay. <laughs> Let's just say if that was my daughter, she would not be working there. Okay. I don't know. Here's what the reply are saying why is he so touchy i got the glimpse of him being creepy when i read jeanette mccurdy's book the second he started walking towards her she was like oh please god no imagine your boss doing this to you at work the way he quickly snatches her arm to get her in a space this is horrifying she looks extremely uncomfortable please bro jesus christ this is uncomfortable no grown adult should be touching young girls like this period where were their parents to protect them this is sickening the entire industry is evil and has been for so long now listen some people might try to argue that that oh that's completely normal he's just a this is a friendly little director you know friendly friendly dan over here I, i'm sure you know if he's so friendly i think you should let him around your kids as well i i don't know if that's your that's your take on it i feel like she was uncomfortable she was trying to move away or whatever now does that clip only make him a creep no but it's with all the other context of all the other clips he's made these kids film the nickelodeon logo was literally a foot dude i can't believe i didn't realize that when i was a kid that's crazy on, on its own obviously the clip isn't too bad um, you know, maybe he's just hugging, hugging, uh, hugging uh, one of her is star actors or whatever. But when you, you look at all the context, it's a bit weird. OK, watch the vids of him with the victorious cast. Whenever he gets close to the girls, one of the guys like walks over like in this video. Notice that when he got close to Liz, Yvonne walked over and he did the same thing with Ari. Even Leon stopped as he was walking when Dan approached Ari. Just because my shirt is too blendy with the cowboy. I need you. Actually, that's not why we're changing oh, your shirt. That? We're changing the progression of days. Oh. But I can't wait to see your new shirt. Is everyone excited about Vic's new shirt? Yeah. Oh, I'm excited! Yeah, please. This is killing me. Oh, no. <laughs> what, Liz Gillies? Because I don't, I don't know what the shirt's gonna be like. I don't know what it's gonna look like. I don't know what, what tie it's gonna be. I'm You're just really excited. Yeah, that's really weird. I, I, I don't know. Is that a meme or something? I don't understand the full context of what's going on there. But why are you excited over a shirt? Is this, is this normal and actor type stuff, or are you excited for another reason, buddy? Like I don't know what, what is going on there. So Leon, we'll take it from your line. And it's obvious Liz is drinking the coffee. Tinted water is so good. Tinted water? You've just revealed a secret about Victorious. That we don't drink that. Uh, uh oh. Thank you. Look, it's a piano. Look, it's cat. Hi, cat. Oh. I'm interrupting it's the entire rehearsal process. Here I go. A really cool song that you're going to help me write tonight. I can't. <clears throat> Andre, you have to. But I gotta go. Come on, come on. Come on, I need come you, on. please. All right. I'll just celebrate my... Yeah, a little bit of the movement is weird, I will say. Seems like people always gotta keep, be alert around uh, old Dan over here. Okay, here's another video of Dan Schneider picking a Jeanette McCurdy because she didn't listen to what he wanted her to do. And then stop the floor. Um, stop laughing at the director. Show some respect, Jeanette. Respect. No smiling. 
If you smile, if you, all right. Take $100 off her check. <laughs> okay, so once again, I can't tell if that's serious. It sort of seems like a joke to me. Now, not to defend Dan Schneider over here. I'm obviously very against him here, but I do feel like some people might be taking any clips they can find at a stretch and just trying to make him look as bad as possible, which you don't need to do, okay? He's already incriminated himself multiple times over the years, okay? It's only a matter of time before an investigation is launched and I don't know, dude, dude ends up behind bars. At least that's what I'm hoping, okay? Okay, so I also wanted to talk about Jack Salvatore in his experience with Dan over here and how it just wasn't a good time for uh, a lot of people on the crew. He'd like bring out a shotgun to intimidate writers and stuff like that. Lots of, lots of wild shit. Oh boy, what a week, y'all. Uh, let's talk about it. My name is Jack. I was a child actor on Zoe 101, one of this guy's shows. I also worked in his production department as an intern on iCarly, and I worked in the writer's room on Sam and Cat and Victorious. This Max documentary that was recently released did a really good job of uncovering the details of workplace toxicity, specifically on Dan Schneider's shows for Nickelodeon. We could talk about the massages. We could talk about the fact that he would literally count his gold coin collection in front of his crew who was living paycheck to paycheck. We could talk about how sometimes he would bring out a shotgun to scare one of the writers when they were working at his house. Okay, so Dan has clearly made a lot of enemies uh, with a lot of people over here. It seems like everybody has completely turned their back on him over here, except, I don't know, Boogie, I guess, who he's probably paying for that interview. But the stuff we're hearing is just absolutely wild, using shotguns to intimidate your employees. That is not normal behavior. That is some batshit crazy type I don't know, sociopathy, okay? And when so many people speak to your character like this, it's probably somewhat true, uh, unless you're Hollywood, of course, and you're writing 40 letters to the judge telling them why a child toucher is actually innocent, like in the Drake Bell case. So I guess in that sense, you can't trust a lot of people, but I don't know, man. These are There's a lot of independent people, not not uh, Hollywood as a whole, trying to shut down somebody over here. We could talk about the high-level conversations I wasn't supposed to hear about how Nickelodeon didn't want to recommend antidepressants for Jeanette McCurdy after her mom died for fear that she might herself and make the network look bad. But what I do want to talk about is never letting this stuff happen again. This is an entire industry built on hope and dreams and adrenaline and wish fulfillment. And that can be a very dangerous thing for megalomaniacs to wield. Even in posting this, I'm a little afraid. Is this going to screw up my career moving forward? I have no idea, but I think it's important and it needs to be said. Because if my silence ensures the perpetuation of environments I don't want to work in anymore, then what is the point of working in them? And until Homeboy goes on 60 Minutes to answer some questions from some real journalists and not a cast member of his who he's paying to be there, apology not a Okay. So unfortunately, this will probably happen again if Hollywood is allowed to exist as it does now. Because in my opinion, you know, the, the entire industry, I've been saying it for a while, is completely filled with the most demonic morally corrupt, narcissistic, degenerate sociopaths. So anyone, I don't know, man, anyone looking to have a career in Hollywood, I'll just say it is not worth it. First off, um, competition's insane. So, you know, probably chances of making it is quite less as well. But if you do end up making it, you, you would think you'd have a great life. But no, you'll probably just end up on drugs or assaulted or, I don't know, rope maxing, <laughs> as they call it nowadays. Now, the problem with these, like, kids shows in particular, right, where they have a lot of child actors working and stuff, it's just a work environment that is bound to devolve into complete chaos because, you know, what? if, if you're working in Hollywood, chances are somebody there's a creep. Somebody there wants to diddle kids, okay? And all of these uh, child actors, their parents are usually extremely neglectful. Like, they are not watching over their kids. They literally just put them on set and let them do whatever the heck they want because they are generating big bucks for the family. And uh, you got like a six-year-old who is the breadwinner of the family and uh, you can't even be bothered to ensure their safety or anything like that. Particularly with the Drake Bell stuff. It keeps, um, I don't know, it keeps popping up in my head how the dad specifically warned uh, Drake's mom to keep him away from Brian Peck, but she literally did not listen at all. And that's what led to all of the these are the replies they're saying. Since Monday, y'all have been saying more and more people need to speak up. And now exactly that's happening. But now you're all saying why it takes so many years for them to speak up. And they're the only ones saying this because the documentary came out. And it took every 
everyone used to speak up. That's the whole point. They were all scared. Y'all are never satisfied. It takes a lot of courage to say what he said, and he even mentioned that this could ruin his career. It doesn't matter how long it took him to say something. He spoke up, and that's all that matters. Okay, so I think what people are referencing is the fact that, you know, some people wait like five years to come out about assault or whatever when, you know, in some cases it might be fake or something like that, and they're, you know, clutching for relevancy. Just as we saw in this, um, I don't know, this Minecraft YouTuber situation where George Not Found was uh, accused of all this stuff, and then later we find out that she was completely lying about everything, and it was kind of just proven that way. Now, does that mean these people were lying as well? I would say probably not, okay? Probably not, just from what I've, I don't know, what I'm gathering. In truth, we don't know what happened, but... We do know Dan is documented as a creep, okay? That's all I know, and I'm just going off the evidence I see over here. Okay, another update on the Drake Bell, Josh Peck situation. Basically, Josh Peck has been sort of estranged from Drake and has wanted nothing to do with him for a while, and basically just didn't help him at all. He was even defending Dan Schneider at one point, so people were coming after Josh Peck now after this documentary. I just want to let you guys know that... Um... This is really, uh, you know, processing this and going through this is a really emotional time and um, a lot of it's very, very difficult. Uh, so not everything is put out to the public, um, but I just want you guys to know that he has reached out to me and um, it's it's been very uh, sensitive, um, but he has reached out to... Uh, uh, to talk with me and, and help me work through this and and uh, has been really, really great. So I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that and to uh, take it a little easy on him. Okay, it really goes to show what kind of a guy Drake is. I can't even imagine what he's going through during this healing process now that everything is public and still be able to acknowledge Josh and share a conversation even when Josh really wasn't a friend these past couple of years. Honestly, I don't, I don't trust Josh. I've seen him from the David Dobrik vlogs. I don't like the guy at all. Now, um, Drake has also been caught for some weird stuff as well, but it probably stemmed from the trauma he had early on. And, you know, having your entire life sort of uprooted like that and seeing all these powerful people stand against you, man, that can that can mess you up. That's for sure. By the way, last video got demonetized, uh, suppressed. Lovely. Thank you, YouTube. Uh, we can't like... Come on, you can't talk about anything now. Now, I was debating making this video because it's just going to get demonetized anyways. But I feel like, uh, I don't know. I wanted to talk about it anyways, okay? Uh, that's it. Bye-bye.